Welcome to a very special concert featuring four gala choruses that performed at the 2021 American Choral Directors Association National Conference this March. My name is Jane Ramsire Miller. I'm the Artistic Director for One Voice Mixed Chorus in Minnesota and also serve as the Artistic Director of Gala Choruses. To the side of the video, you'll notice an event chat. I encourage you to participate, to share your performance memories, and to cheer on our performers. Above the chat, you'll find a tip jar. If something you see today moves you or reminds you of why you love gala choruses, show that love with your support and give generously. I have two guests with me today to share some of the history between gala choruses and ACDA, but first, here is the Turtle Creek Corral from Dallas, Texas, performing their set for the opening concert of ACDA National.
Thank you, Turtle Creek Corral. I am excited to introduce Gary Miller, who was the artistic director of the New York City Gay Men's Chorus from 1980 
1998, and Dennis Coleman, who conducted the Seattle Men and Women's Choruses from 1981 to 2018. And now I'm not doing much of anything. Um, I also, in 2016, I gave my final performance at Gala, and then a year later uh, resigned from my church position as well. So I'm singing in my church choir. It's wonderful just to be a singer uh, until COVID hit and we had to do it all, uh, you know, uh, on Zoom, which is very weird. I'm currently retired and talking to you from my home in Palm Springs, where I'm entertaining distinguished Dennis Coleman, conductor of the Seattle Men's Chorus, because we've both finally been vaccinated. So Gary, I understand that you were part of some very interesting history 40 years ago. Back in 1984, the New York City Gay Men's Chorus was one of 12 choruses selected by Blind Audition to perform at ACDA's Eastern Division Conference. But what happened after the announcement of your selection? Well, the first thing I think that people need to understand is what a blind audition is in case uh, people have not been involved. Uh, we sent in uh, a tape uh, without our name on it. It was an actual tape in those days uh, to the committee that chose the choruses to perform and, and no one was identified. Uh, so we were chosen based on musical merit and then they unmask who the chorus is and invite the chorus. Uh, so the Eastern Division invited us to be there. They were very supportive of, uh, of us. But when the national office found out, they were very dismayed that we had been accepted and tried to prevent us from performing. Uh, they said that we could perform if we, if we only used the words New York City men's chorus, not gay men's chorus. Of course, we didn't agree to do that. Uh, and the officers of the Eastern Division were incredibly supportive. So we did perform uh, under our real name. We handed out our own program. And what was so threatening about having an out gay chorus perform at ACDA? Oh, come on now. You know, a lot of the leadership and the choral directors around the nation were gay. And Be closeted. careful, Dennis. What? Be careful. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to name yeah. any names. <laughs> but they, you know, they were very homophobic. Yeah. for their own careers. And they and many of them had to be at that time, I suppose. Absolutely. Uh, and Dennis, you were at a very infamous Salt Lake City ACDA meeting uh, in 1985, so a year later. Can you describe what happened there? Uh, what was your experience? Well, we set up a display table. Uh, kind we of meaning the, gala. Yeah, in the corner, the back corner, as I recall, of this of the hall. And we manned it and very few people stopped by to get our materials, but a lot of people lurked nearby and were trying to see who did stop and you know that sort of thing. So that was my first impression. Secondly, in the meeting, as I uh, remember and Gary remembers, we left after this, con this very confronting meeting with the feeling that they were going to meet again and uh, resolve this in our favor, we thought. So that was my second impression. But my, in some ways, my most important impression of that conference was meeting Vance George, the conductor at that time of the San Francisco Symphony Chorus. We rode in the airport of the only two of us one night back to the airport and just hit it off. We had never met. And he became a great supporter of Gala and still is. So I talked to an ACDA historian about some of this history and I said, so how has the relationship between ACDA and Gala changed? And he said, honestly, he didn't feel like there really was a relationship. Um, after this controversy, there was a lawsuit and that sort of changed everything politically in terms of could perform. Can one of you talk about this lawsuit and, and what, what ensued after it? So in 1986, the same thing happened to the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles, where they submitted a tape uh, by blind audition under the direction of Jerry Carlson. Um, and they were denied 
permission to perform under their full name as well. Uh, and at this point, uh, everyone had gotten a little smarter. So involved the ACLU who brought a lawsuit on their behalf. Uh, and that is what eventually settled the in- issue once and for all. Okay, so I actually have a transcript here that describes what happened. Early in 1986, the board of directors, this is ACDA board of directors, approved the following resolution. Any gay or lesbian group performing at any ACDA function or referred to in any ACDA publication shall be referred to by the full name of such group without requirement that such group delete the word gay or lesbian in its name. Well, and since then, um, queer courses have performed in all kinds of regional and state and and national conferences for sure. Um, my course performed was the first course to perform at uh, Minnesota ACDA. And I actually, I remember when our name was announced as an LGBT chorus, I remember people getting up and leaving the hall. Um, it was scary. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Gary and Dennis, did you ever imagine that ACDA would invite gala choruses to host their own set at a national ACDA conference? No. <laughs> it's <a> word, no. <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful. So. It is great. It's wonderful to see. Yeah. And, the, and, and to have these particular choruses is great pleasure. So I understand that ACDA and other choral organizations are actually rethinking their practice of holding these what they call blind auditions because it tends to discourage diversity. Uh, Instead, the selected ensembles have a very similar kind of academic choral sound rather than representing the real diversity of sounds in ensembles across North America. Um, Dennis or Gary, what are your thoughts on that practice? I'm proud that Gala has already led the way in this at our festivals by making sure that we have trans choirs perform and youth choirs and a a real strong variety of all the different types of choir makeup we have. And they all sound different, Mm -hmm. you know, and sound beautiful in their own way. Uh, And it, it really is a mistake just to judge it by pure choral tone. Well, I, I think that if you want to diversify the program, you need to diversify the people who are choosing the program. And until the people on the selection committee uh, are a diverse representation of the population at large, it's not going to change. Uh, so I would start there. During the past decade, Gala Choruses has also addressed issues of equity, access, and belonging in really exciting and unique ways through our new harmony resources, in our programming at festivals and other events. Our choruses across North America are addressing racial justice and really grappling with these issues with Gala's support. So to all of you viewers out there, uh, Gala has been around for 40 years. If you want it to last another 40 years, please drop some money in that tip jar. Uh, Some of us old fogies were there at the very beginning. Uh, This guy next to me, I never thought would last this long, Dennis. (laughs) Well, we gathered for the very first time uh, in Chicago in, in, I think it was May or June of 1981. I had been conducting the men's course at that time for about two months and I showed up, I was still in, in shock from being fired from my Southern Baptist position. And so I was hardly awake, it seemed, you know, I was just like that. And all I could ask was, what are we saying? What are we saying? What are we saying? (laughs) It it was essential for me at that point. I had no idea what a gay chorus should sing or anything, or or I I knew nothing about male chorus repertoire. And Mm -hmm. so uh, I was completely needy And the wonderful thing about Gala, it provides that networking for uh, especially new conductors coming into the organization that would never know about the rich history of the music we've created over the last 40 years. And the songs had become very special for us as gay and lesbian choruses. And more than anything, what Gala meant to me is friends. I just miss seeing people so much right now. Um, 
you know, not being able to have the festival and I can't wait till things are back to normal because gala not only I think changed much of our world, but it totally changed me. And I would never want to see it disappear. Give some money folks. Thank you, Dennis and Gary for joining us today for this interview. Next up, a combined set featuring the Austin Gay Men's Chorus, our song, the Atlanta Gay and Lesbian Chorus, and the San Diego Women's Chorus. Just one voice singing in the darkness. All it takes is one voice Singing so they hear what's on your mind And when you look around you'll find there's more than one
can be together now and forever I love you I love you And when I'm praying I hear him saying I love you I love you People all over the world They're opening up They're coming around And they're saying
Thank you so much for coming today and being part of our SCWC family. Uh, we have one more piece for you, and then afterwards we'd like you to join us. It's a little bit crowded, so you can probably just stay standing where you are when we get to the end of the first circle chant. Thank you to our three gala performing choruses. My name is Michael Tate and I'm thrilled to be the new president of the Gala Choruses Board of Directors. The concluding song you heard, Still I Rise, was commissioned by Vox Femina, the first gala trouble chorus to perform at an ACDA national event. 
Gala courses and ACDA have overcome significant challenges since 1984 when an ACDA conference refused to let the New York City Gay Men's Chorus print the word gay in the conference program. 40 years later, we are honored to share a first time Gala Choruses set for this 2021 National ACDA Conference. We are here as a testament to the truth that music changes hearts and minds. For many of our singers, growing up without positive role models makes the act of singing in an LGBTQ chorus an intensely personal way to change our world through song. Each singer comes to a gala chorus for their own set of reasons, but merging a love of singing, a commitment to creating social change, and having a choral community to call home are what makes GALA a powerful movement in the choral music world. Thank you, ACDA, for this opportunity, and thanks to the LGBTQ singers for the courage to be who you are. We are here in the memory of those who have fallen, those who have fallen, those who have fallen. We are here in the memory of those who have fallen, here for the courage to be who we are, courage to be who we are. We are standing in the Proud gay man. I am a gay Hispanic senior. I am a proud black gay general one. I am a pansexual woman with a physical disability and ongoing mental health challenges. I am a queer polyamorous Jew. I am lesbian. My daughter is a gay ally. My granddaughter is a lesbian. And my grandson is a gay ally. I'm a pansexual cisgender female in a long term lesbian relationship raising our teenage daughter. We have been married for two years, but together as a couple for over 40 years. I am bisexual, and I am proud of my two moms. I raised my kids, guided my grandkids, then I came out and found me. My grandma came out after raising her family, and she just keeps getting cooler. I am gay, I am a Christian, and I sing to transform lives. I sing because I am an ally. I sing for the rights of all people and the health of the planet. I raise my voice with the Austin Gay Men's Chorus to help build a beloved community. I join Austin Gay Men's Chorus for the friends and the music. I stay for the family. In the SDWC, all of my facets are accepted and respected. I am proud to give us voice to the Austin Gay Men's Chorus. Because half a century after the Stonewall riots, there are still those who would deny my basic human rights. I sing with the awesome gay men's chorus to change minds. And my favorite part of being in a gala chorus is the sense of community. We have no choice who we are sexually attracted to. The only choice is whether we have the courage to create a life loving and living differently than societal norms.
If you are moved by these stories and the music of our gala choirs, please support gala with the tip jar donation before you leave today. Thank you to our performing choirs, to ACDA, and to you, our gala audience. Use the tip jar generously, and don't be afraid to log on to gala choruses and donate there as well.